On this episode of the John 1911 Podcast, YouTube demonetizes our channel. The rifle range has bobcats, 30,000 FEMA guillotines, and what the hell is a poop knife? Okay, good morning everybody. This is Marky and Freeze, and this is episode 83 of the John 1911 Podcast. How was your night, Freeze? Uh, not too bad. That's good. I'm a, uh, I'm dragging ass today. I'm still getting over the flu, so I'm a, uh, you know, I'm just barely awake, and I'm just drinking caffeine, and you know, once we finish this, I'll I'll roll out and maybe try to do a little bit of a workout in the in the uh, armory gym, and you know, try to get my day started. I'm just, and, and it's like nine thirty. It's like, oh man, it's just terrible. <laughs> so, a couple yeah, of, I, oh, go ahead. No, I've just I've been just potting around this morning. Made a big pot of chili, and you know. Yeah, this is your off week, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. A uh, couple things happened last night. We got a notice. I expected this to happen, but I didn't expect it to happen this way. YouTube has demonetized our YouTube channel. Um, but it wasn't personal. I mean, not really. <laughs> I, I I mean I I read the notice and. Honestly, across the board, little guys, YouTube will save themselves millions of dollars by doing this. Yeah, well, so let me let me tell what happened was we got we got a notice last night. We got a thirty day warning from YouTube, Google, whatever they're called, Alphabet, and um, they basically have changed the the qualifications to. I can't remember what they call it. I don't know if they, like they, they they don't call it monetization. You know, like if you're like a partner or a, something, like you move up to where like they'll run commercials on your stuff. Um, so anyway, we're not big enough anymore to qualify to run commercials, and they didn't target us because of guns. We j- actually, I mean, you know, I, they haven't really. Kicked YouTube, us too hard. No, YouTube's actually been, well, I don't want to use the term good to us, but, I mean, they have not nearly showed us the angst and anger they have other people. And, you know, maybe because they don't see us. <laughs> so because, yeah, that, yeah, and, and that very well could be the case. That 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 is the case. I mean, we're not big enough. So anyway, they've, they've, um, they've decided that we're, we don't have enough subscribers and we don't have enough, I don't know if they counted it as, uh, I think it was hours viewed. Hours or minutes a month or something. Yeah, yeah, and, something like that. And it's like a thousand subscribers and maybe four thousand minutes. Yeah, four, something like that. It can't be four thousand hours. No, but, no, I think I think you're right. I think it was minutes, but yeah. So we don't have a thousand subscribers and we don't have four thousand minutes of activity on YouTube a month, which is a you know ad, it was which is admitting that we don't have much of a YouTube presence. So. Um, if you are listening to this, you know, look, do we care about YouTube? Not really. It's a diversification from Facebook. Uh, yeah. You know, w- uh, then I'll explain the monetization in a minute. But if you watch videos on YouTube, think about subscribing to our channel, um, or john1911.com or john1911gunblog or whatever it's called, or, or going through and just liking a bunch of our videos. You know, just you don't e- don't even have to. Even if you don't want to subscribe for whatever reason, maybe you keep your subscriptions real clean. Like you know, I just only subscribe to like three people. You mm-hmm. know, you can like a bunch of our stuff, and actually that'll help YouTube like feed our stuff in front of people to you, for, in front of you, and to people that YouTube thinks look like you. So, um, so you know, so just you know. The thing is, we get like just the amount of people that listen to this podcast versus the amount of people, the the minuscule amount of people that watch us on YouTube. I mean, it would be. I mean, we would if the if everyone from the podcast moved over to the YouTube channel, it would blow the shit up. Oh yeah, definitely. So definitely. I mean, our 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 podcast listeners far out out see you know outweigh our YouTube presence. Oh yeah, and you know, and people. I know there's a lot of controversy in the firearms community about YouTube monetization and 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 you know just the the relationship everybody has with YouTube. And I'm not I'm not I, I'm not 
disagreeing with that. I'm not like people are like don't you know boycott YouTube or don't take monetization. But you know we didn't used to monetize, and a couple months ago I decided to turn on all the monetization. And the reason I did it is because if YouTube has to make a choice, if you're someone at home and you're on their website and they have a uh, they have an option of putting two videos in front of you from no name gun people and or no name anybody's and one of those videos is quote monetized and one of those videos are is not monetized guess which one they're going to try to put in front of you you know so it's using the YouTube algorithm to try to organically grow you know or grow our um, <clears throat> our reach so i mean anyone that we haven't had it over here but i know there's a, there's people on youtube or you know in that environment that are all they all keep score on each other as far as you know you know i mean you know monetization you're taking money this that screw them and it's like you know whatever i turned it on because i might as well we're not getting any money from them and, you know, they turned it off. I was like, eh, I don't care, whatever. That means they turned off everybody else that's small. And then yeah. one day it'll be back on, or you know, or whatever. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm sure there's probably a fair amount. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sure there's probably a fair amount of, like, two-bit gun channels where there's people out there that really, like, they're all in on, on YouTube. Like, it's their future. Like, they like they quit school and sold their car. <laughs> and, you know what I mean? I mean, like, this is what I'm going to do for a living. Yeah. Yeah. And those yeah. people are probably like, oof, I got to go to McDonald's now. <laughs> I can't get well, 40 bucks a month. Well, you know, hey, but, you know, they can always, uh, they can always, uh, live their dream at $15 an hour at McDonald's. Oh, wait a minute. No, they're not kiosk machines. So. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I don't think I've ever, we haven't done this in a while. Um, our lifetime, our lifetime revenue from YouTube, let me look it up here real quick, just because, You've never, I don't think we've ever, we haven't talked about it in a few months. Our lifetime revenue from YouTube monetization. Now, we turned it on, it looks like September maybe of 2018 or 2017. We have, we have quote, made to date, according to YouTube, $9.71 total. Yeah, think, baby. Yeah. Hey, I, rem I, I remember when it was $5. Dude, I remember Shh. when it was like a do when it was like, hey, we're up 81 cents, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it just became a metric for me to measure, like, oh, you know, are we, are we, are we growing at all? So, um, you know, <laughs> it, it's cool. Um, I mean, I don't know. Like, didn't you tell me that you had heard it? You have to get a thousand dollars before they'll even disperse any money. Yeah, yeah. It's like your YouTube account. I, I guess we'll just call it that for the sake of you know. They they say you made X amount of dollars, but you know you don't see it. You you just take their word for it. When your when your account gets to like a thousand dollars, they'll they'll issue a check or or something along those lines. And I could be totally wrong on this because hey, we've never seen one, <laughs> yeah, you know. But um, but yeah, I mean it's yeah, it's it's one of those things. Is like, it's, yeah, it's no big deal. I mean, you know, whatever. I mean, we're, we're look, we're not doing this to make YouTube dollars. I mean, that, you know, it's like, whatever. I mean, look, hey, if YouTube wants to send me a check for 10 bucks, hey, I'll take it. You know, hey, well, it's a half. A, it's it's what's the smallest coffee at Starbucks? I wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I, I thought that I was going to catch you in that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but no, I mean, it's like, whatever. Um Hey, it's cool that we're pushing ten bucks though. Well, I guess we it'll are. never go any higher because we're done now. <laughs> yeah, but that was our end of our YouTube career. I should take a screen grab of it, and be like, "We did it." <laughs> uh, um, also, I, I'm, I'm I'm bitter because we didn't break ten. Yeah. Um, it seems like, man, it's like last night was like everybody bailed. So YouTube bailed on us, and then hmm. our 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 source for custom targets steel targets for the range he bailed um he we've been we haven't mentioned this on the podcast but because it's we've been kind of quiet because we've been having some issues we've 
you know, we got some steel targets from one company, and they're they're okay. Um, there's some, they're well made targets. There's oh, yeah. there's a uh, but there's a the the design as far as how to mount them for us is not really practical. Um, and then and they're, they're they're expensive. I mean, for what they sell, it's oh, it's crazy shit. expensive. So yeah. then we found a company. A company had reached out or, or had f- had found us on Instagram, and they're I don't I don't want to say where they're at because I don't want to. But anyway, so we, you know, I mean, we don't get stuff for free. I mean, yeah. we didn't get a discount or anything. It's like okay, I'm interested in one of your targets, the high angle target because you got to get ready for the SWAT team, and I want to make sure that these bobos don't try to shoot something at like you know, I, you know what I mean, dude. You know, some goddamn yeah, guy is going to be like 15 feet from a steel target. Yeah, and you know, because it, it just happens. So, like, hey, I was like, we'll pay for it in 2017. Everybody's gone. There's issues to holidays. Ship it to us in 2018. And then, you know, that'll be on 2017 taxes. Yeah. I don't know what the hell happened, but for <laughs> some I mean, I paid for it in 2017. I paid for it. And for some reason, it didn't show up on our accounts until 2018. I don't know how the hell they did that. <laughs> um, uh, and then um, uh, they shipped the Target Federal Express. And Federal Express turned around and shipped it right back to him. <sighs> we got no, no. It was bizarre. And it was like, what the hell? You know, and it's just like, so we have a, a we have a, <clears throat> we have a guy that we kind of, a new friend, we'll say. And he had reached out to us initially when he met us. And he was like, hey, if you guys ever need targets. Um, we got a CNC machine. We can do that easily. So, I don't think he realized that, you know, the type of steel we needed for these targets. I mean, I think he was just thinking he could just cut up some steel. Well, he was shopping around and, um, uh, apparently he can't make the price. He can't make the numbers work for AR five for sheets of AR five. 500 i don't think it was 550 i think it was 500 probably 500 and uh <clears throat> you know so he basically is like i can't i can't do this so it's like ah uh. so i'm sitting here in the middle of january with the flu get us technically still have it going i don't have any damn targets so you know what that means Well, it it means that gives you more time to uh, push out into the woods. Uh, Yeah, well, it also means that we're going to have to move the paper target design to the front burner that we've been talking about for years. Yeah. So, um, so what what uh what I just told Freeze publicly, we've been talking about it probably for a while. We have some ideas as far as. You know, what kind of targets are good for certain applications or certain drills or certain or certain things? And we like to, for paper targets, it's more practical to just be able to get the target to fit on eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and just print it. Yep. I mean, you know, we you can get big printers. You can do all this fancy stuff, but. Now, all my targets are printed off a printer in the office. Yes. Eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. So, so what I want to do is, um, come up with some designs for John 1911 and then we'll just put them on the website for free and then we'll shoot the drills and do things. And the people want to shoot the drills too. They can just, you know, download them and, and print them on their range. And, uh, that way we're all kind of on the same sheet of paper. Uh, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> you know, I mean, like I remember like we had, I don't know who was it. There was some <clears throat> company we were doing business with years ago. And they had sent over all kinds of target designs for. Uh, I'll have to go. Through oh some God, yeah, yeah. I think I still have their designs on a on a CD. Yeah, or something. So um, I don't have a CD player on my laptop, but I think I've got an external one. Yeah. So you know, we'll have to. I've already kind of tentatively tentatively come up with some ideas because you know what's also happened is we now have this range, and we kind of know what the. The short part of the range is going to be like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, it's probably going to be 25 yards to about 300. 
You know what I mean? And so we could do paper targets for even precision rifle shooting that are more catered towards a 300-yard target that I think is a little bit more favorable for the home gamer. You know, a lot of them don't have access. They may have a 100-yard range. Some of them may get a 300. And then, you know, you get beyond 300 on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. You're you're into a little bit more skill, and you're into a little bit, you know, Hubble Space Telescope glass. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> you no know, doubt. I mean, there's no point making stuff that, you know, that like <clears throat> we're so cool, and you're not. You know what I mean? I don't I don't want to do that. It's not it's not you know that'll come later. Yeah. Um, well, so. uh, that tells me I'm what we have two paper target stands that I've made so far. Yes. So I need to make a few more. Uh, yeah, you know, well, you know what? Probably not because, you know, we'll, we'll need a short, well, yeah, we'll need a few short, for the short ranges, not for the, not well, for that intermediate rifle range. But because the thing is, I'm not going to leave like a target, paper target stand up at 300 yards. Like, for example, where the 300 yard, 250, 300 is, because that's such a busy zone. That it and if it'd be so rarely used, you know, it's it's either just going to get yeah. eaten up or run over. So we might as well. I mean, yeah. I can just set up a if I y'all were going to shoot a whatever. But one of the ideas well, I had for a for a paper target would be to come up with some. And I have I have the ideas. Come up with some some designs that are practical for say military surplus guns with yeah. iron sights. And for people with, say, 40-plus-year-old eyes. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can kind of – you don't you're not stuck shooting at super mm. short ranges, but, you know, you could shoot at 100 and still see the target. I mean, you know what I mean? Well, well I also want to build a couple uh, paper target stands for 25 and 50 yard for, like, 22 rifle. Well, yeah, that's going to – yeah, that's, that's part of actually why – that's looping back to the the, the, the high angle target stands because I'm setting up high angle targets at those shorter ranges. <clears throat> Excuse me, and they'll yeah. be um, we can do targets, paper targets right next to them. And plus, in the 360 range, we'll have permanent stands as well. So, but yeah, yeah that'll you know. So, but at the, the, as far as the targets, you know, I, it's not necessary. I, th- I think a lot of people <clears throat> what they do is they come up with these targets on paper. They want to get as much as they can on eight and a half sheet. Paper, on eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper, or they want to make it so busy, they don't recognize that you know iron sights say at 100, 150, 200 yards. And you don't see any of that crap anyway. You're, yeah, you're lucky. You basically, your target becomes the sheet of paper, and it's like, yeah. well, why don't we just uh, clean just this up a, big, a little bit? Yeah, just put a big black dot in the center. I'm well, I'm, but yeah. you know what I mean. But what I mean, because can... at a because at a hundred yards with iron sights, I see a little white square with a black dot in the center. I don't see, you know, well, like for example, the targets you can get by that have like a rack of pool balls with the the solids and the stripes with pool ball numbers, dude. I can't see that shit at twenty five yards, much less a hundred. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> so, you know, it's like just the idea of, you know, not necessarily designing a target that can get as much shit on a piece of paper, but maybe having it have a little bit more contrast so you can. And but also it's in scale to MOA. So, for example, as opposed to shooting an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, designing it so you can see the contrast at longer ranges uh, beyond 100 but also, when you go to score it, it'll be built into it. We'll have some MOA in it. So be like, oh, this is a one MOA. Go- I shot one MOA with this 100-year-old rifle. Holy crap. You know? I mean, just stuff like that. So, you know, it's it. and, and the thing is, since it's, you know, it's our range, it's our, it's our website, we can make as many targets as we want. So it's, you know, we don't have to get cram cram everything into one goddamn sheet of paper that's where i think it it all falls apart for most people because you yeah. these targets you either have to either have like eagle eye vision or the hubble space telescope yeah so yep so if you have any ideas out there 
for targets, leave them in the comment section on our blog page, john1911.com. Like, I don't know, let's, maybe something we've never heard of. I mean, I don't know, or just some great idea. Um, <clears throat> it could even be, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a centerfire rifle or pistol. I mean, maybe it's something for a shotgun. Yeah. You know, I mean, we don't know. I mean, whatever. I mean, we, hey, we, 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 yeah. we run shotguns. Yeah. Bits call, bits on a computer take up zero space in the, in, you know, functionally for us. You mean? Yeah. We'll have a little vault on the, on the website that'd be like, oh, yeah, just, pull, oh, there's my shotgun target. Bam, pull it out. You know? So, yeah. you know, just, just an idea. Yep. Uh, hey, did we talk about the fire pit at all on the pod? I think we did. I don't know if we did or not. Maybe we did. Yeah. I think we talked talk to it a little bit. Yeah. You see the guy on the internet was like, man, I don't, I don't feel good about the amount of air it's getting in that fire pit. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, I know. It was, it was pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, that'll, you know, that was thrown together. Um, we'll, we'll shore it up and make it better. <laughs> you know, I, that fire pit's going to see a lot of use yeah. over time, you know. But you know what? If it had been like August, you know, and it, you know, I, I'd have set that field on fire with that fire pit. Um, but it was so, it was so cold. It was still dry, but you know, so I was whatever. Ah, that'd be fine. You know, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll shore it up. We'll, plug some of the holes up. We'll make it better. I mean, you know, it'll get better with time. <laughs> hey, you like Sherman tanks, right? Uh, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been known to, uh, to, uh, like them. Do you remember a story that we did? Um, you know what? I think we talked about it on the podcast. It was a few months ago. There was a guy and he was in Texas. I think he was in Dallas or I think he was in Dallas. Maybe it was Houston, but I, mean, I always, for some reason, I think of money. I think of Dallas. Um, he had bought a Sherman tank, and uh, I'm like totally restored, and had it shipped in, and they dropped it off in front of his house, and he left it there in on front, the street. On the street. Yeah. 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 And it's like, mm-hmm. what are you going to do? It's a tank. Are you going to tow it? You know. So. Yeah. Well, that you know that story. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you've um, you realize this, but that guy has made the news again. I have not heard. Well, they are not connecting the two, but I happen to recognize the guy's name. Let me find. So this guy, <clears throat> he's a here. Uh, okay, he's a law. He's a he's an attorney. He's a very he's a very well known attorney. Actually, when uh, remember when Governor Rick Perry. Of Texas, they tried to trump him up on some bullshit charges to knock him out of politics in Texas. Like they charged him with something, like some kind of corruption. It, he he beat it. It was it was hor- it was a it was fake bullshit. <clears throat> yeah. Well, anyway, this this guy uh, was it was um, uh, was uh, uh, Rick Perry's lawyer. So he's got a ton of money, and he makes yeah. a lot of money, and. Apparently, in 20, his name's Tony Busby, former Marine, is a lawyer, and uh, looks like it's probably Houston. He uh, he got a divorce a couple years ago, so he's on the singles market. He's, you know, he's a, he's a dude with money, so if you've ever seen the, the hot crazy scale, you know, there comes a point when, you know, it doesn't really matter what you look like, and... So he is, he's out there trying to meet these women. And he met this woman named Lindy Lou Lehman. And right now I know you're like, Marky, why the fuck are we talking about this? You may have heard about this. This woman is a 29 year old court reporter. Um, really pretty girl, but kind of like so pretty that honestly you're like she's probably crazy. You know what I mean? You know, I mean, look, I know that's not politically correct to say that, but you, dude, you know what I mean. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there comes a point when it, that's actually become, you know, there's women that are so attractive that typically what ends up happening is they don't grow up right because everything's they're not treated normally, so they don't know what normal is, and so they go nuts. And I know that probably pisses off a lot of people, but it's the goddamn truth. So when you see this girl, Lindy Lou Lehman, um, 
you'll re- you'll, you'll immediately go, hmm, she could be in that scale. So she there's conflicting stories going on here as to what happened. So she shows up at Tony Tony Busby's house. Um Tony says that he was having a party and there were multiple guests there. She says that they were on a quote first date and she showed up in an Uber. So I guess things went sideways and he, in in his mansion, the same mansion where he had the tank parked down front, and he was like, "You need to go." And he called her an Uber, and she went batshit crazy in his house and destroyed. Yeah. It looks like a million dollars worth of art. Oh, get the hell out of here! She destroyed Andy Warhol's. Oh man! She destroyed. Uh, she took sculptures, was throwing them across the uh, across the room. Um, let me see if I can. not uh, And um, let's see here. Let me see. just like it went went crazy. So anyway, they ended up having to call the cops. Let me see. Uh, you here. think? Yeah. <laughs> so so she, you know, so she's been, you know, arraigned and all that, and you know, he's like, I had a guest at my house, and and. You know, sometimes it happens. People get out of control, and uh, I asked her to leave, and she didn't. And she's like, "We were on a date," and but still doesn't make any sense. She's not saying why she went crazy, but you know, her attorney's like, "We will discuss this later." Um, you know, our side of the story. Uh, yeah, basically, huh. there's no way we're we're gonna let this go to goddamn trial. So, uh, yeah, well, you know, date or no date. It's hard to justify destroying a million dollars worth of art. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, so the big question is, so the, so Mr. Sherman Tank guy, the big question everybody has is about the 29-year-old court reporter. Is she a hooker or not? Nobody will say that. Nobody will say that on the um, publicly except us, I guess. And I don't, you know, I'm not. I guess oh, I guess I better be <laughs> fuck I better be careful. There is some question since the problem is none of this makes any sense and no one can really understand how all these events came to lead up to their conclusion and her side isn't talking so in the void uh, there's in the vacuum of that. There's a lot of conjecture, and I'm not conje- I, It's not my conjecture. It's the buzz around Houston. What's the truth here? So yeah, I just thought I'd tell you about Mr. Sherman Tank guy. Um, <sighs> and uh, that's awesome. Yeah, and uh, I sent you a link, but uh, dude, the tank. Here's the thing. It was kind of interesting because they're they're talking about the story. So they started like, oh, you may know this guy because of the Sherman Tank. He actually, when he this when he bought his tank, he actually arranged for the local news channels to be there, and they actually did a story on it being delivered. And when you when you look at this, um, he did this all right. Like they show them bringing the tank in the flatbed. They laid down. Um, what is it? Uh, is it? What are the? Is it uh, one by twelves? Um. Or you know it's like the twelve the twelve inch wide boards that really aren't twelve inches wide. Yeah, they're, they're those are two by twelves. Two by twelves. So, yeah. you know they they laid out the two by twelves. They rolled the thing down. There was a cop there from the city, and they're like, no, 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 you got to pull all the way up here. You can't have the treads. You can't have metal treads on my street. And they they moved it just right, and everything was kosher. And yeah. um, I actually was really impressed by that. So, but uh, it's a here's the thing. Total this this tank is cherry. Apparently it landed in Normandy. It's cool. It's really interesting. So I spent more time looking at the tank than I did the crazy Uber girl. So I just yeah, I was like, you know, I love police blotter stories, so I was just yeah. like, Holy shit, I know this dude. So you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, but the kind of guy that buys a tank, parks it in front of his fourteen million dollar mansion, doesn't really tell the neighbors what's going on, but tells the news crews to show up and videotape it, is the same kind of guy that ends up having to throw an alleged Uber princess out of his house while she destroys millions of dollars of art. You know what I mean? There's there's well, there's problems here. Yeah, well, you know, when you have that kind of money and power and you know, you just 
do things differently, I guess. Eh, you know, I mean, hey, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, what's the first thing you do when you win the lottery? You're going to buy a Corvette or you're going to buy a Sherman tank? A Sherman tank, of course. Because mm-hmm. I could give two shits about a Corvette. Yeah, they, yeah, because, um, you don't have to I mean, worry, you don't have to worry about parking a Corvette at the strip club. I mean, yeah, well, since I don't go to strip clubs, you're right. I don't have to, uh, <laughs> worry about it. I mean, you know, I drive an older vehicle. I don't, I, I don't drive new vehicles. I, be, cars are tools. It's no different than a freaking hammer to me. I, I don't get off on them. I don't pop wood when I see a, uh, you know, uh, a, a Lamborghini or a Ferrari drive by me. It's like, whatever. I give two shits about cars. Yeah. You were, you were, you were a muscle head when you're youth though. I mean, your oh, cars yeah. didn't I mean, look good, but they ran. Oh, my cars were shit boxes, but they were hot rods. Yeah, that know? was us. Yeah, back I mean, in the you day, know, you know. I mean, I mean, I had Novas and Chevelles and Chargers and Cudas, but they were all garbage. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, though, even in the condition that they were in, I mean, the motors ran, but you know, the bodies looked like hell. You know, because no one had any money back then, but. Even in the condition they were in, I wish I had every single one of them today because they'd be worth a freaking fortune. Oh, my God. All these cars that we all had in the 80s. They're all toasters now. <laughs> I know, but all these cars that, like, all these roached-out cars in the 80s that all the kids drove. Now, like at Barrett-Jackson, I mean, they're going for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Yep, yeah, it is. Yeah. So yeah, crazy. Hey, but, uh, under the uh, under the under the news of the rats finally leaving the ship, did you hear what Kimber did? Uh, they, they are opening no. a manufacturing facility in Alabama because Kimber's in. Uh, oh, uh, they're in New York. They're in um, Yonkers. Is it Yonkers? I think it's Yonkers. Yeah, I don't have any Kimber guns right now, so um, I think it used to be Yonkers, New York. Yeah, uh, I believe so. That that that's still where they're at, but but good for them. Yeah, I mean, the the, the truth is, dude, they're getting out. They're they're opening up manufacturing facility in Alabama. There, it'll be a right to work state. They won't have to deal any, with any bullcrap nonsense with you know people trying to you know just you know ring them to death with you know on money, and yeah. then eventually. Eventually, the company, they'll just invert themselves. That's my new word. They'll just all of a sudden just close. They'll just slowly just migrate to Alabama. You know, when the senior leadership of Kimber decides that, you know, they're ready to sell and, they you know, they don't care anymore. Or they, if they want to stay in New York or they want to retire to uh, to Alabama and hang out in Gulf Shores where there's no snow, you know what I mean? They, it's all going to, yeah, they're all going, they're getting out. Yep. Within, yeah, within, yeah. within 10 years, Kimber's gone. Good. Yeah, good. You know, I mean, look, um, all these communist states, I mean, you know, that that had, you know, all these gun manufacturers in them. It's like it's it's like they are not your friends. And, you know, and the 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 gun manufacturers, it's like, why give these states their their revenues when you can give it to states that appreciate them? You know, New York doesn't like guns, but they're more than happy to take uh, Kimber's tax money. Yeah, you know what? And there's there's a little bit more to it than that. And you know, let's talk business and let's talk money and let's let's talk real here. Let's not talk brand, okay? Kimber sells. <clears throat> I, I haven't looked their numbers in a couple years, but Kimber sells a metric shit ton of guns. <clears throat> and I think a lot of people that shit on Kimber don't recognize that, or they just they just discount it. Hold on. Excuse me. I'm still I'm still dragging this morning. So, you know, I mean, they sell like what the hell is it like? Like, were they selling at one point? Was it seventy five thousand guns a year? Yeah, it was. It was. It they they weren't quite at a hundred thousand, <clears throat> but. Or was but, it, I remember it was thirty some thousand. Then they got up to like I thought it was seventy. No, it was like it was like seventy or eighty thousand guns a year. And for not having a military contract, that's pretty freaking sweet. And not selling an AR. Yeah. And not selling a, a really a high capacity one or nine. Yeah, I mean, you know, think about this. I mean, you know, the the their bread and butters of the nineteen eleven market. Mm-hmm. They they well they they do nineteen elevens and they they make a lot of hunting guns. 
and they've been coming out with more and more tactical bolt action rifles. A lot of them are pretty, you know, they're very feature rich. And that's what Kimber, Kimber, look, Kimber back in the day, Kimber totally made the 1911 market that we have now because all these guns, none of, you know, to get any features, you had to basically buy a gun that may or may not work from Colt. And then send it off to a custom gunsmith and dump three or four times more money in it. Where Kimber came along and you could literally go, I mean, go into your local Podunk gun store and you could buy a gun with ambi controls, checkering, slide cuts, uh, night sights, just, you know, coatings. I mean, it was, you know, um, all these, all these options. So here's kind of like, here's, here's my full circle on this. Kimber is a big company. They make a lot of money. Okay? And when you make a lot of money, you have a lot of money for R&D and a lot of money for for um for design and development and for market testing. You know, Kimber came out with the Kimber Solo. That was not, you know, a a a, a no that was not a a, a low-cost gun. Kimber just came Remember that K6 gun, the the six-shot revolver Kimber came out with like last yeah. year? Those yeah. guns, I haven't even seen one because you still can't get them. I mean, they're they're so hot. But I mean, to design a revolver and then manufacture it from the ground up, Kimber doesn't make revolvers. That was a lot of money to put into yeah. that gun. And what oh, yeah. I I think what's happening is I think Kimber is looking at Sig Sauer USA, Sig USA, and going, we could easily fucking compete with them. We could make everything as good or better because we got the money. I yeah. mean, here's the thing. People are like, oh, yeah, Wilson Combat. I mean, I don't know how many. I can't remember. Like, Wilson like Wilson has really expanded their 1911 production, you know, and they've done all this stuff. But I remember, I remember with it like 10 years ago, eight years ago, like Ed Brown and Wilson Combat, and they were they were busy they were full tilt boogie busy they were selling guns left and right and everybody and they were all making about three thousand guns four thousand guns a year yeah kimber 75 i mean what let's let's say it's just seventy five thousand guns i mean i bet you kimber moves to alabama and all of a sudden you're going to start seeing some really interesting stuff come out of kimber yeah uh i hope Mm -hmm. I, i mean i do i i hope Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be phenomenal. It'd be good for the market. It'd be good for the industry. It'd be good for every gun guy out there. And you know, you know I mean, I I just I just know that Kimber looks at Sig USA where Sig USA was five eight years ago, and it was you know it's no one Sig USA was like the bastard child, um, you know, of the gun no one because it was not a European Sig and all and now Sig. They've come out with all these really interesting AR type rifles. They got the, they got the military contract, the 320. You know, it's they've got all kinds of stuff going on, and it's a it's a whole different ball game. And Kimber's looking at them. Kimber is like a, the U.S. senator that sits on the hill and looks across at the White House and goes, "I could be president." <laughs> I'm serious. Well, They're like, "I could do that easily." He's not better than me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well. um, I mean, honestly, if they uh, if they pushed in that direction, uh, ah, they, you know, they could potentially uh, make it. You know, they have. I mean, obviously, they have a fan following. Yeah, you know, that's obvious in the amount of guns they sell a year. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, Ima- imagine Kimber coming out with a high capacity striker fired gun. And now here's the thing that hits people's ears right now. And they're like, dude, who gives a fuck? But here's the thing. Imagine Sig USA coming out with a high, with a uh, with a uh, with a high capacity nine millimeter gun. There was a time people were like, "What? Whatever." Look, look. Yeah. yeah. How do you like me now? I mean, it's like none of this is that mm-hmm. hard. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tell you what. If uh, if Kimber came out with a um, a striker fired polymer gun. Dude, I'd be super stoked and excited about seeing that. That would be interesting. It would be. Yeah, yeah, it would be. Um, you know, it, look, um, you know, you sit there and go, well, you know, I mean, you know, the, what would they bring new to the market? 
um, probably nothing, but uh, competition. Competition. <laughs> Yeah. You know, because because yeah. I'll tell you what, everyone who comes out with viable striker fired polymer gun just hits Glock right in the ass. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. Glock owned that market for many, many, many years. And now their their market hold is slipping away. Does that mean Glock's going to go away? No, it sure as hell doesn't. You know, Glock's going to be in there. They're still going to be selling guns. They have a reputation and they make a good product. But. At the end of the day, everyone who comes out with a viable platform that works and people buy, it just bites into Glock's market just that much more. Yeah, you know, there, it just seems to be endless room for 1911s. There's endless room for striker-fired handguns. You know, oh, hell yeah, I, there I mean, is. Kimber, I mean, just, I mean... I mean, just think, I mean, I, I'm pretty certain, like Kimber, like look at, the, look at their barrels. Even for years, everybody that even shits on Kimber... Like, if you had a gunsmith that was not trying to ass rape you, and you wanted to take your Kimber and have it totally worked on, if he looked, if he was honest, he'd be like, "Dude, I'd leave that barrel on that Kimber because they're 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 top notch." Uh, no one replaces Kimber barrels. Yeah, I, okay. well, I mean, I, okay, yeah, I'm, yeah, there are people. I'm sure there's guys that oh, do. But th there's some but, guy on a gun form that replaces a Kimber barrel so he can have Storm on it or. You know, yeah. KKG or whatever, all the, you know, it's just like, you. Whatever. yeah, but, but look, out of all the parts on a Kimber that, uh, on a Kimber 1911, you can replace. And trust me, there's parts you, if you want to play with your gun, you don't have to because the gun's fine out of the box. But if you want to upgrade that gun, there's a lot of parts on that Kimber you can upgrade. The barrel's not one of them. Yeah. So it was, you know, just, and, you know, I mean, I'll tell you, I got uh, like Kimber, like their their bolt action rifle. See, I love Winchester model uh, the Winchester model seventy bolt action guns, and oh, all of the, all of their guns are Winchester model seventy design. As, yeah, as well, far as I you know, know. Yeah, I mean that's the typical you know Mauser Mauser design. Um, but I like that three position safety that the Winchester has. I love that safety. And the three position safety is the way to go. I mean, it's, um, I think that's just fantastic. So, yeah, you know, I mean, hell, I may be talking myself into buying a Kimber rifle one day. Um, look, I mean, I like Kimber rifles. They're a little pricey for my uh, for my book. I mean, actually, I guess I should say this: Why haven't we discussed Kimber the past couple of days for a project that shall remain nameless? Is there a reason? It, because of the the They're MSRP. They're too expensive. The, okay. the, because the MSRP on the uh, Kimber rifle does not fit. The I'm not going to go into detail no, of what we've not. been discussing, no. but it it doesn't fit the criteria of what we talked about. We'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, okay. All right. But 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 you know, with that being said, I mean, th there's nothing wrong with Kimber rifles. Kimber rifles are 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 excellent rifles. But when you start getting into the price point of a Kimber rifle, honestly. If I have to weigh my options, you know, uh, a Kimber rifle or a Winchester Model 70, I'm going to probably pull for the Model 70. Yeah, the th but, Kimber but competes I'm, I'm, on features. They don't. Kimber doesn't sell stripped down guns. They sell feature rich guns at economic, at, you know, at lower prices than their competition. So you're not you're not doing a budget gun when you buy a Kimber in any. Oh, in any oh gun. no, 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 no. But budget budget rifle and Kimber are not two words that you put in the same sentence. But with that being said, I mean, man, I mean, you know, the Kimber rifles get great reviews. They're phenomenal rifles. And and check this out. Kimber does make a tactical a tactical rifle. Did you know that? Yeah, I saw they started doing it a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I, again, you know, the tactical market and that's not me. I'm not you know, I'm not a tactical douche like you are. Um, but but, you know, again, anytime you get more, uh, you know, more hands in the pot, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's good for competition. And look, I think the uh, the Kimber tactical uh, rifle that I'm thinking of is like right around twenty five hundred dollars MSRP, which means Ooh. you can probably get one around two grand, twenty one hundred. Yeah, see that's expe that, that's getting up that, there. That's a lot of freaking money. Like I said, Kimber is not a budget rifle, but they're know? competing against three thousand dollar FN guns. 
That's yes. what they're trying to do. Yes, that that's their market. But like um the uh the uh their budget hunter um and 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 these prices may be may be wrong because it's been a long time since I've, you know, paid any attention to them. You know, and prices, you know, fluctuate so much. But the classic Kimber Hunter, you know, it's their their base model hunting rifle. Comes in a variety of calibers and whatnot. I think is MSRP on it's right around, I don't know, somewhere around eight, nine hundred bucks. Maybe it's a little more now. But okay. you know, and it's like, is that affordable? Yeah, it's affordable, but it's kind of getting up that's, there. That's definitely it's, up it, there. It, yeah. It's it's you know, if you want that gun, you have to save up for it because Honestly, you can buy a Remington 700 or a Winchester Model 70 for several hundred dollars cheaper, and you'll have a rifle, as far as a hunting rifle goes, that'll be just as good, if not better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and I mean, but if you're the guy that's got three or four hunting rifles, you've got a couple Remingtons, maybe a couple Winchesters, and you want to kind of, you know, you know, go for it, then that's fine. I mean, you know, but my point is that Kimber doesn't offer a budget rifle. Yeah, they don't, they don't, Kimber doesn't really offer anything budget, so. No, but you know what, though? If they try to go in the direction that you're talking, you know, maybe they will offer a budget rifle to compete with Savage or Ruger, you know? It'd be nice to see Kimber come out with a decent budget rifle in, say, uh, the $500 range. They can do it. Yeah. I mean, I would be willing to bet, too, that you could walk into some places and find a Kimber that's been sitting on the rack for a while at a discount. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And, and and again, when I'm talking MSRP, or bleh, bleh, MSRP, let's face it, no one pays MSRP. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, when I think about Kimber and I think about them being competitive, I think back to my old F. Remember that green FBI gun? Yeah, the FN. Yeah, and, you know, that gun back then was... Uh, I mean, that was a shiny piece of coin, buddy. Yeah, and it was. I Maybe. shot that gun for four years and never got that gun to shoot as good as th- the test target they claimed. That was literally your pig in a poke. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, I mean, we dicked with that gun for years, and it was a neat gun. It was heavy as didn't, shit. Didn't, didn't you even drop it? Did you drop a trigger in that gun? No. Um, It, had adju- it was adjustable because it was like a pre-Winchester 70 70- yeah. Uh, you know, like you could adjust it. Um, I t- I'll tell you what, to be honest with you, for, for, for a rifle based off the Winchester Model 70, boy, that thing was, man, that thing was shit. And I'm not saying every single one of them are, but the one you had, man, just didn't, it, you just could not get that thing to perform. Uh-uh. And, and, and honestly, for those that are, that are fans and follow us, uh, that FN rifle is the exact reason that Marky went full-blown douchebag with blousers it is um but it's interesting to do it again like let's say well like that gun was in it was an interesting format and from a reference gun in the collection it would be interesting to still have it it would be but you know i would never there's no point to buy it again but no, um but you, you know if i ever ran across one of those guns in a format made by kimber at a good price and i was bored uh, well, I might you know, give it a shot. I'd if, be real uh, curious. Hey, man, you know, if uh, if it was middle, you know, if it was, you know, uh, April or May and, and you got your uh, earned income credit tax refund monies and, uh-huh. and, yeah. you, and you know, and your pantry's yeah. full, you don't have to spend all your ebbets, then, you yeah. know, maybe maybe one's in the future. But right yeah. now there's just way too many other guns that are that need to be bought over over buying another one yeah. of those. What I'm saying yeah. is, you know, a feature rich Winchester Model 70 at this point, I would keep my eye on Kimber than I would going back to FN. And oh, yeah, it kind of yeah, hurts you know, me a little bit to say that. So <laughs> I know yeah. because you're you're a big fan of FN. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and, but you know what though, I would be real interested in seeing a, uh, you know, a Kimber in that, um, yeah, the, the, we actually, do you remember when we were, cause you met the guy you talked to, actually, I think you kind of, kind of, he was like, oh fuck when he's talking to you. Oh, is that the dude I 
pissed off. Yes, uh, he's the guy that shot the test target on our gun, on my oh, FBI baby. gun. I so pissed him off. Yeah, well, <laughs> he didn't mean to. You no, just, I didn't. Yeah, you I did. didn't. But look, you, I was you being, weren't a I SWAT was... officer. He does military law enforcement sales. You're not a SWAT officer walking up with the golden pocketbook. OK, at, at that at that freaking 18 pound gun that he was trying to sell you. <laughs> so tell, might as well go ahead and tell the full story. So I, I, well, I don't I don't think I was even technically there. I was over it. I was talking. I was over at SIG doing something, I think. And you had gone over to FN, and I know you were you were like because I had talked. The I think it's his name's Voss, um, and he's he's well known guy. Um, they had this rifle prominently on display at their table, and 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 I mean you know, and all the vendors are there, and all the people are do, standing do around. Do you remember the name of the rifle? I bet you don't. <sighs> No, I don't. It, they the FN. It's actually made by uh, it's it's made by a company in Europe called Alpine. Uh, they FN brings it in. They call it the ballista. The ballista. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think I came up with like a half a dozen uh, um, uh, made up names for the ultimate behemoth. <laughs> and, yeah. You know. I mean, the gun was a freaking joke. I mean, this thing weighed like 84 pounds. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it was like the switch caliber gun and, yeah. you know, just turn a few things and everybody and and um, everyone's think, jacking this dude off because I guess he's the he's the big man on campus. He's you know, there, or, he's there. He he shoots on their team. I think he does. I think he's their team captain. But he does. Yeah. He's their law enforcement military sales lead 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 guy and he like he shot the test target on my fn bolt gun uh 0.31 0.315 moa is a hell of a test target with 168 grain uh federal gold medal match yeah and we could never yes. we could never repeat that yeah um and like eight guys shot that gun we hand loaded for and, it. factory oh, ammo. Sw- oh, and, sni- and, and, everybody shot that. We look, no one I mean, could and, come close to that. And, and I mean, we're talking about guys that are accomplished shooters, SWAT sniper guys. Camp I mean, we're Perry talking, guys. We're talking about guys that shoot at Camp Perry. We're we're not talking about you know four or five beer swilling swinging dicks mm-hmm. going out there and shooting this gun. I mean, we had some some guys that are far better shooters than we are try to try to even duplicate this, and it wasn't happening. We I don't think we ever we we were lucky to get it to hover around one MOA. You know, which which you know, in, in all fairness, you know, one MOA is is good, but it when is you get, good. When, when you get a point three five one, what is it? Point three five one or point three one five? It was almost okay, so, a point two. So when you when you get a test target with those numbers, and no matter what ammo you shoot through it, no matter what skill level shooter shoots that ammo through it, you can't duplicate that. Look, I'm not going to say FN fudge that target but i'll tell you what i'd like to know what what freaking i mean okay i know the guy that shot the target is an exceptional shooter there's no doubt about that yeah i'd, I'd like to know what freaking ammo and what conditions he shot the that target at. said it was federal gold medal match 168 grain it's the <laughs> fbi it's the load the fbi uses oh, well, they used. I, I don't i think they've switched but um yeah i mean yeah. dude i don't we never i mean look i look we didn't expect it to get to Point three MOA. No, but you uh, know what? Point five would have been nice. We if, were hoping if, if at they least had, dance around a half MOA. You know, but I mean, if, if they've got you know just a smidge over a quarter MOA test target, you think you'd be able to shoot half MOA all day long? I don't think consistently we couldn't get the gun to stay under one MOA. Yeah, see, and that's and that's the reason that that gun's not sitting in the yeah. armory. And it was a lot of money in that gun. And here's the thing too, like that gun. You know, like there were some issues with some of the FN guns. Like there was, uh, like there was a run of guns where the plating for the uh, chrome line wasn't done right because it's got the same. It had the same barrel on them as like the well, the original test, the original design of the gun had a had a 
had a 240 barrel on it. Um, and so, you know, but th- th- these are chrome plated barrels and, you know, all this stuff. Well, and there was some issue with the, with the chrome flaking. And then there was another run where they, like, I think the roll marks were screwed up and they spelled Fredericksburg wrong and just like goofy shit. And this gun never fell in any of those. Well, I have a theory. I think that when he shot the test target, he burned the barrel out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and I think, I guess that was the NRA show, or I don't know if it was shot or what that was, but you were, and they had the you ballista. Know what? I, I think that was, I think that was uh, a Louisville NRA show. I think one. that's yeah. when we were in Louisville. Yeah. Um, and that was like I could the be gun. I, I I could be wrong, but you know. Yeah, I think what what ended up happening to that gun was because they it's all of us about to, about two thousand and eight, you had people that were suddenly kind of interested in possibly having switch calibers, and everybody was coming out with stuff that it was so heavy. Like now, you see custom shops doing where they'll spin barrels on and off guns, and they kind of make it easier to to switch the calibers. They're not as easy as a blazer, but you know you could do it at home and with some wrenches and you know torque some stuff and you know and, and get your things. So they brought this gun in, and they you know it's all this, you know it's three thirty eight Lapua, three hundred Win Mag, and three oh eight, and they brought it in. I can't remember what barrel they basically brought the told but then you know what what gun what caliber it came in but it took forever for the guns to come in but then you couldn't get you couldn't get the barrel conversions the caliber conversions and for years and basically everything just passed them by and people basically figured out you know this gun it, i mean the gun was god was it like 14 grand or nine it was crazy like back then what the money was and like each barrel conversion was like three grand or something. So oh yeah, it was it was. I mean the whole platform was um was just stupid. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, can't remember was, how much it, it was, weighed. Um, it was it was heavy. It was expensive. I mean, like I said, the the whole thing was just just stupid. Yeah, and it was <laughs> you know, and the the biggest problem with that gun was the weight. Oh yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, uh, eighty-four and a half pounds, and of course I'm exaggerating, but it was like, dude, I'm not a small guy, but the last thing in the world I want to do is hump that thing up fifteen flights of stairs to get to an overview, you know, for a sniper shot, you know, yeah, and, and I, if I think, I'm a SWAT officer. I Fuck mean, that. I don't want to Google it because I don't care that much, but I think that gun weighed something like eighteen, nineteen pounds. Yeah, it was, it, it was, was crazy. It was like right, it was like right around 20 pounds. It was, it was insane. I mean, and there was no reason for it. I mean, seriously, absolutely no reason for it. Mm-hmm. It was just crazy. And I mean, I think they had a break on it that weighed like two pounds. It was like, stop. Yeah. You know? So you need to fact, say you, you, you were not impressed at the FN booth like you were at the SIG booth. <laughs> uh, well, you know what though? I'll tell you what, um, I kind of pissed off the guy at the SIG booth, too. Oh, you never admitted that one to me. No, no, yeah, you were there because um, uh, what the the SIG booth, they – shit, what other brand? Oh, no, it was the Blazer guy at the SIG booth because Blazer and SIG, you know, have that relationship. They had the little corner of the Blazers, and because you're a Blazer guy, you were talking to this dude. Okay, and, well, they had two. They had two. They had Blazer USA, which was their hunting side, and we talked to the really tall dude. And then, yes. over, then SIG had a huge booth, and in the corner they had my Tactical 2 gun. It was, yeah, well, the real tall dude – um, when you were talking to him, I, mean, I, I said something about the blazer Kevin, that Kevin Wisner. Yeah, I said something about the blazer that I mean, you would think I pissed on his mother's grave. But you know, because I, I look, I looked the guy dead in the eye and I said, "What guy in the United States is going to spend this kind of money on a straight pool?" Hunting rifle, or even yeah, because yeah, I, it was. I was like, I was looking at the. They had a rack that had five or six hunt. Yeah, the not the uh, tactical two, but the um, the R eights. We were at the, the it was R8s. at the R eight section. Yeah, 
And and I'm just like, you know, I say it's like I can buy a whole lot of Winchester Model 70s that will perform just as good, if not better, than these rifles. And the guy, I mean, it was just like he like it, he looked like Homer Simpson going into convulsions. You know, it was I mean, he didn't. Uh, yeah. I, well, I hey, pissed. now, let's not rewrite history. I seem to remember that you picked up the because uh, he was trying to get me to like on their thumbhold stock, whatever that gun's called. And you were like, I love them whole stocks. And you were like, I like the way this feels. And you were like, I like this gun. <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know. I was look, like, I hate them whole stocks. Um, yeah, but Canada you know what? Western. I mean, the gun felt good. And, and I, I don't, I'm not going to, you know, not acknowledge that. But <clears throat> yeah, am like I going to spend average- that kind of money? Am I going to spend that kind of money? When you get, well, you know, it's switch caliber. Okay, you know what, though? For the amount of money I'm going to spend on this in five different calibers, we'll just pick a number, five. I'm going to buy this rifle, and I'm going to buy five different calibers to switch. That kind of money, man, I can buy 25 Model 70s and yeah. throw in a couple Remington 700s to boot. Yeah, I think every gun that you picked up at the Blazer booth to look at had a price tag. I think everything there was probably like seven grand and up. Yeah, it was it was it was stupid. Like a cheap, like a a base model Blazer R8, at least back then. Forty thirty eight to forty forty five hundred dollars. I mean, it's like oh yeah, yeah. What average hunter? I mean, because they don't, you know, they don't they don't care. I mean, they're not they don't sell. And and that's what I'm saying. Okay, so. And, and this is, this is what I pointed out to the guy and he didn't like it. Cause I mean, I know he's at a trade show and you know, he's trying to pimp his product and he's doing a job and I understand all that. But, but still it's like, um, I can go out and buy a, a Ruger American deer hunt with for less than five, you know, for hell for 350 bucks, not counting optics. Hey, now Ruger American wasn't out back then. You're making shit up now. Okay, but you know what <laughs> was the new Savage line with the uh, yeah. trigger that oh, actually yeah. came out that year because we were at their booth looking. I was actually drooling over them. You were like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but um, no, they did have. I remember there was some gun they had that was like a, it was interesting. Like it was a three thirty eight or something. It was like that's an interesting gun. It was yeah. it was interesting. Um, you know, okay, so so I can go out and spend four hundred bucks on a Savage. Since the American wasn't out then, you know, I can go over to the Savage booth and buy one of their guns for literally 1% of what you're charging for your gun. And you know what? <laughs> for deer hunting, for elk hunting, for moose hunting, for whatever hunting, uh, is my $400 rifle going to kill as many deer as yours? Yes, it will. Just as many. No more, no less. It will perform just as well in yeah. a hunting scenario. You know, and that was my point. How are you going to get the American hunting market to drop five grand on a hunting rifle? They're, it's, it's, it's a different, you know, they're, this, it's a different, they're just a different thing. So I um, do know a guy, I do know a guy in Pittsburgh, um, who has more money than sense. And is that the guy that a, got brought up on federal charges for the hunting problem? <laughs> No, 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 no. Okay, it's okay, okay. Guy. No, it's a different guy. And he has a – he has gun. he's – man, I mean, I'm telling you what, you'd love to go through his house. I mean, he he only deals with the best of the best. I mean, he, he firmly believes that money buys quality and all his shit is high end. He's a Weatherby guy and – you know, I mean, like we were, I was up, I was up there. As a matter of fact, it was Christmas time. This is several years ago. It was Christmas time. I was in Pittsburgh and we're sitting there, uh, actually drinking some homemade wine. And we were talking about crossbow hunting and, and I was telling him what I hunt with. And he's just, and I don't remember what crossbow he had, but his crossbow was like 1200 bucks. You know, it was, yeah. you know, it was crazy. You know, and he was like, well, this is what crossbow I, I hunt with. And I'm like, okay. And at the time in Pittsburgh, I think crossbow hunting was a real limited season because Pittsburgh's got some weird deer hunting rules. Um, or they did at the time anyway. And, and I'm like, well, I think the guy's name's Cliff. Maybe I could be wrong, but when we were talking, 
I said, well, when I climb up into my deer stand and I drop my crossbow out of it and it breaks, I said, I'm going to Dick's or Cabela's or Bass Pro and I'm going to buy another crossbow just like it for less than 300 bucks. I said, when you drop your crossbow out of your deer stand and it breaks, you're going to climb down, you're going to go home and on your drive home, you're going to be crying that it's broken. I said, that's the difference. And I said, but at the end of the day, I said, I mean, at the time I'd killed, I don't know, 15 or 20 deer with my crossbow. My son-in-law killed his first deer with my crossbow. You know, it was just like, you know, how many deer is your crossbow killed? You know, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, that $1,200 crossbow doesn't kill more deer than my hoarding, uh, Man, I don't even remember what freaking model it is, you know, but uh, my Horden XL or whatever the hell it is, it's like a $300 crossbow. You know, it's nothing special. It's nothing fancy, but it kills deer all day long. Oh, you should see. Um, I saw some highlights from the uh, AT. Is it the ATA? Amer- is it the Archer American? Archery some- Association. Yeah, like the, their big their big convention. They just had it out. In, like, I think like they had ATA had their convention like Last week and then this week should be Shot Show. Um, so, like, I guess Excalibur now has their cross. Their big thing is they're taking crossbows and they're trying to make them. Su- they're calling it suppressed. So they're doing everything they can to dampen the noise of the crossbow. And See, that's they, bullshit. I, well, it, no, they're they're they they, they 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 they. It's interesting. They did it. It's fine. Um, it's- but then now what they're doing is. They've putting a crank into the crossbow, and so now instead of pulling it, they're not as long as say like the TAC fifteen and as big, but I guess they're so heavy they have a built in crank now. You have to crank them. Um, see, I have a problem with the crank. Um, like with my crossbow, you just grab it and you you pull it back. But if you know if you have bad shoulders or you're weak or whatever, um, or you're older. You, uh, you know, uh, you can buy a cocking mechanism, which is basically a cord with two hooks on it that, you know, you put over, put over your, you know, around your neck. Mm-hmm. And then you bend over, you hook the hooks on there. And then as you stand up, you use your back to cock the crossbow. You know, I mean, that's been out for long. The, my problem with the crank, and there's nothing wrong. I mean, you know, crank works. You sit there and put the handle in, you crank it back and forth, but you got to carry that freaking crank with you in the field. It's really it, it's a lot easier to just take a string with two hooks on it and wad it up and stick it in your pocket. And yeah. as far as the as far as making a silent crossbow, dude, that's just stupid. Uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not. I don't care that much. But I just thought, I saw that and thought you'd find that interesting. Um, so I'm I'm going to spend probably two to three hundred dollars more on this crossbow because it's silent. Fuck that. I mean, yeah. it's stupid. I know. It's, it's And anyone who crossbow hunts knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't I don't want to spend the next 10 minutes talking about crossbows. I just don't. I don't I'm just not a big archery guy. Yeah, I'm no, sorry. And, and neither am I. Yeah. The only archery I do is, is, is crossbow hunt. I don't bow hunt anymore because of my shoulders and I'm old and broke down. But, uh, you know... I, I, my crossbow, I break out during hunting season. I shoot a half a dozen uh, bolts through it just to make sure that the scope is still set on it. And then I take it hunting. So if I shoot a dozen bolts through my crossbow a year, it's been a good year. I, that, that's the extent of my archery. Hey, I got a question for you. Yeah, I might have an answer. Do you know anyone who lives in Hawaii currently? Who lives in Hawaii? Yeah, were there, were there, that were there for the missile threat? No, oh, no, I don't. Damn, I just was like, seriously. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know what? I am like. Apparently, Japan had had. Uh, I, I guess that happened on Sunday, and sometime during a day or two later, Japan had the same. They did. They had the same a similar accident. They sent out an alert for a missile threat too. Well, my my whole thing is this was uh, because I'm a huge some worker in, some worker in Japan was like, um, uh, uh, you know, oh, America thinks they can they can 
they could be the dumbest people people in, on the planet. Hey, hold my beer. Watch this. <laughs> well, my whole thing is uh, is this was uh, because you know I'm a big conspiracy theorist. Uh, my whole thing is this was planned just to see how the people of Hawaii would react. They they planned this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm. You know what? I think FDR did it. I think it was part of FDR's plot. To uh, get us into World War II. No, no, no. You're wrong. And I'll tell you why you're wrong. Because it was part of Jade Helm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Don't even get me started. Did I, t- I told you about the, uh, the girl that, that, uh, yes. that was talking about the FEMA, the FEMA guillotines? Yes. I don't know dude. if we talked about this on pod or not. This no, came no, up we, again. we have not talked about it on podcast. Ah, so dude, the newest theory, FEMA guillotines. I want to buy one. 30,000 FEMA guillotines. Dude, I want to buy one. Oh. I want to know. I want to know if anyone works for the government, if anyone works for FEMA, if anyone has a friend that works for them. Tell me where and how much, and I will take the company trailer there and buy it because well, see, I'm, I figure I'll need the trailer to bring a guillotine. Out. See, and this, see, but this is where you get into these dumb people because they're, you can tell like their universe because it's all about dr- drama and okay. it's about, okay, it's like, all right, so, you know, like, okay, so, like, if you were to, like, meet one of these people, like, I never heard of the FEMA guillotines. Are you there? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I've never heard yeah, of the yeah, FEMA guillotines before, but there's, you know, 30,000 FEMA guillotines apparently. So it's like, okay, you ask this person, what does a FEMA guillotine look like? So, and like, they would probably describe, like, I don't know, like some contraption with this heavy ass blade and a rope and a pulley and a things like, you know, 25 feet tall. And it's like, okay, is, okay, first of all, that's a real slow way to kill people. Second of all, if you were to make a guillotine wouldn't you just make something that's like hydraulically operated and is like maybe four feet tall you just show i mean you know what i mean it's just like well but you know what that's a typical it's a typical case of government contracting contract keeping guillotines or us in business yeah god (laughs) dude i so you know this guillotine guillotine. was made by the lowest bidding contractor (laughs) well (laughs) i hate that that fucking bullshit dude i the AR, the AR douchebags, the guys on the AR forums and stuff talk about, you know, up talk about the, 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 you know, mill spec being the lowest contractor and all that shit. It, it cracks me up. But, mm-hmm. but seriously, that just means they have to, you know, chop your head two or three times before the head separates from the body. Dude, I, I seriously, if any, it, Jade Helm and fucking FEMA guillotines. <laughs> I want a FEMA guillotine. I do. So I mean, like, but like, okay, like, okay, thirty thousand FEMA guillotines. All right, just okay. Just let, let's just latch onto that for a minute. It's like okay, so you make a guillotine. You don't plan on killing one dude with it. So you're probably going to. You're planning on killing. I don't know. I mean, I would think at least a few hundred people per guillotine. At least get some of your money's worth out of it. It's like so. Yeah. And how many people? So like, so thirty thousand FEMA guillotines. Um, so it would be, I, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean, you're gonna, I, I mean, you're gonna kill, I don't know, five million people. With, I mean, like, isn't there an easier way to kill five million people than thirty thousand? Ge- I mean, it just, it just, I mean. Well, I mean, you know, gas trucks. Put them in the back of a tractor trailer and pump the uh, pump the exhaust fumes into it. It's not an original idea. It's been around for eighty years. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's just like, I mean, what the hell? Like, I, I mean, I, I, mean okay. I, I hate to say okay. it, but you know what? That's a good point. That's a joke, and that will piss off people. But you know what? Okay. Why didn't the Nazis guillotine all these people? Because it's a it's huge too pain slow. in the dick. It's it, a pain in the ass. It's slow. I know. mean, it, it. Everyone wants. Everyone watches all these bullshit movies, and everything has to be like this. They're they're addicted to drama, and so like this girl, she reached out and she's talking about Jade Helm. She literally I, talked about Jade Helm, 30,000 FEMA guillotines, and then some kind of forced 
transgender conversion or therapy or something. And yeah, she, yeah, she was talking about you know the government forcing people to become transgender or or some. Cr- I mean, I I mean that's I, a thing. I, I apparently to her it is. Okay, I didn't know like appar- like if you'd heard that before. I was like, I don't okay. know. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on. I mean, I don't know. Like, it, is didn't, this the same girl it, that showed up at the guy's house in the Uber and threw the shit across the room? No, no. But didn't didn't the government pay for Chelsea Manning to become uh, a chick? She wants to run for Senate. Yeah, I know. Whatever. But but I mean, the point is, maybe that's where that you know. I don't know. Didn't the government pay for that? Um, I think they did. I actually can't believe I even have to address this conversation or even think about it. But it's like I actually I mean, what's the definition of that? Like, what does is does it mean? Is is that dressing up wearing a dress and putting on makeup and a wig or is that chopping your dick off? I don't know if no, she's I, had her dick chopped off. See, I don't know if she's had her wiener chopped off or not, but I think I mean, she's got uh, boobs. I think she's got the hormones. Um, I don't think that's that much money compared to chopping your dick off. I think chopping your dick off is probably a big, big check. Dude, I'm telling you what, I can use my poop knife and chop your dick off. It doesn't cost that much. I mean, here's the thing, but, dude. Instead but, of guillotining I mean, people's heads off, you could guillotine but, their dicks off, and it'd be just as effective. They would exactly, all fucking feed to death. Exactly. But I actually made that comment to uh, you can't Segway. can't put a tourniquet on a taint. You know, no, I, no I, I brought up that to segue into another comment. Okay. Uh, uh, um, the poop knife. So I'm the other day I'm crawling around the Internet like I always do. And some guy was talking about his family's poop knife. And he goes on to say that um, he was 22 years old when he before he realized that no one that having a poop knife wasn't normal. Apparently in his family, they all throw big logs when they take a dump. And they had this rusty old butcher knife that hanging up that they would use to chop up their logs before they flush the toilet so they would go down. <laughs> thus, thus the poop knife. <laughs> so, 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 guy goes on to say that's that, a meat eating so, family, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So the guy goes on to say he's 22 years old at this point, and he's at his dealer's house, you know, and they're all sitting around, you know, Deal, smoking. De- dealer, like dope dealer. Yeah, yeah, his of pot course. Guy. Okay. So they're all sitting around, and all of a sudden, he feels that you know he feels a dump coming on. So he goes, <laughs> so he goes into the bathroom and throws a log, and then uh, you know he he realizes that you know man, this is you know it's not going to flush. So he cracks the door and he calls for the you know the guy that you know owns the house, and he's like, hey, can I borrow your poop knife? The guy's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so he's like, I, I need your poop knife so I can cut up my dirt. You know, so everyone, everyone, everyone in the freaking house is laughing and making fun of this guy. And he's just like, it, it took me 22 years to realize my family was so fucked up. They had a <laughs> and he's like, I thought it was commonplace, but apparently not. Did you ever visit so, somebody's house, go in the bathroom and come back, come back out and look at them and go, y'all motherfuckers need a new butcher. <laughs> so, so. In in my uh, in my basement where you know I have my bar and I have my bathroom. You've been in it many many times. Um, <laughs> and a lot of people don't know this, but you know uh, I have a urinal in my bathroom because yeah. I set my bathroom up. You know because you know I like using the urinal and you know when I finished my basement, it's like fuck it, I like a urinal. I'm gonna have a urinal. So now I got to go to a flea market this summer and find a nasty old rusty <laughs> butcher knife. And I'm going to hang it on a hook in the bathroom, and that is, and I, it's going. And when people say, "Why do you have a knife hanging on the wall in your bathroom?" I'm going to say, "It's my poop knife." <laughs> I might even, I might even have a little plaque made that says "poop knife," <laughs> you know, clean after use, you know. But, but and so it, it was the, it was the, it was the, uh, it was the, the disclosure of the poop knife that finally dis finally pushed the residents of new california to secede from the rest of california the poop I mean, knife. You, know, you know the uh the the secession of the non-crazies in california i mean i would so love to see it happen it's not going to happen i think it's going to happen i don't know man i don't know well actually well it, it, i think it will i think it'll happen in our lifetime and here's why um 
it's not a radical – these people that are doing this, they're actually – they're organized. And this has been going on for a while. And they um, – there's a, a – you know, they, they've looked at the Constitution and, you know, the things they have to do to prove that they can do it. They're not trying to leave the union. They just want to break off from California, form another and state. But here's the thing. Say, yes. you know, well, but here's the thing. In our lifetime, there is a possibility – that California itself may try to secede from the United States. So you would see, um, you would, uh, you know, you would see people like I ain't leaving. It'd be just like West Virginia, Virginia. Um, and also there is a, uh, there's a growing movement and this has been going on for a while too, but it's gaining real traction. They're talking about breaking up the ninth circuit. Uh, which is the uh, the the big federal circuit that's w- the western part of the United States? I think it's California. I mean, it's California, Hawaii, yeah, um, Washington probably, yeah. and Oregon. Yeah, and you yeah. know, it, and 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 honestly, the Ninth Circuit does need to be broke up. Well, here's the thing: you could. It's another example of you could break up the Ninth Circuit and break up whatever too. But also, like, if you look at a map of California and you look at like you know the idea, like just think of, like the way California, the rest of the country is going. There's a split coming like there's there's a chance that they're going to want to break away and you know do we let them or do we fight a war well if we if we let them or we come to some agreement are we going to give them san diego military base Uh, no um you know we still need access to the west coast so you know that means there's going to be it's going to be it's not going to be a clean break and all these people that are not going to want to it's a very small part because also, you know, imagine California breaking away. California is so nuts, dude. They'd break away from the U.S., but they'd still want to trade with the U.S. and want to have, like, a lot of similar kind of connections. But then they would do something like, hey, we're going to let China open up a naval base here. Yeah. And China could put – I mean, I'm serious. If people think that's there's no way, uh, a, a seceded California would easily allow Iran to open up of military facilities in their country. I mean, it's, they're, they're nuts. Yeah, they are nuts. And, and yeah, I mean, I could see where they would, yeah, where they would think that's a good deal. Yeah, they, you know, like, especially like China, they'd be like, we could, you know, do this big deal with China and they'd give us a bunch of money. We could lease some, we could lease some San Francisco Harbor, you know, and it's just, you know, I mean, I think it's coming. I think there's real, there's a real push for this. And here's the thing. I think breaking up California is going to be the beginning. The next state, I think, that really is going to be liable to be broken up is going to be New York. Because the truth is, you know, most of New York is rural, and most of New York is very, you know, they're not. Well, they're, they're, New, New York State is a huge state, mm-hmm. and frankly, the majority of the state, 90, 95% of the state is conservative. Unfortunately... It's dominated. The remaining, yeah. the five percent that's left is all liberal, and and that has all the population, so they dominate the state. So if you were to break up California, and California were to stay in the union, so that would add you know two more senators, and you know some con- you know reshuffle the deck. So yeah. and it would be you would get two liberal senators from from bullshit California. You'd get. Two probably conservative-ish type senators from New California, so that'd be plus two, and then you would see the same thing. You could do a two and two for New York. It would be almost kind of like a push in a way. I mean, yeah. Um, I, well, the thing is, if if California pulls it off, that would uh, that would be the stepping stone for New York to be able to pull it off. Oh God, yeah, it would. I think that would. I think. I think this. I think the cal the California thing is so is so out of control in such a unique situation because California, like they're literally, they, I mean, like they're, they're, they're flouting immigration law. They're flouting foreign policy. They're flouting. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Yes. Like there was a rumor I heard that I guess the justice department is considering criminal charges against, against politicians or like, I guess, the sanctuary city things. I state, heard that. Yes, yeah, state executives that in, that intentionally break federal law and governor, think, governors, mayors, city officials. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, um, I heard that. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if they're going to push forward for it, I'll but bet, I wish they would. I bet it is true. 
you know, and it's just like it's you know it's you know like. Look at what's going on right now with the DACA thing and like, you know, did Trump say, I don't know what he said, shithole country or whatever he said or didn't say or everyone's whatever. But it's almost like you can tell the Democrats, they all talked in that public meeting where they're all like, oh, yeah, you know, we could come together. This is an opportunity. We can we can we can negotiate, you know, we can compromise and, you know, and, and Trump's like, yeah, you know, I don't want to ship the people. We could do something for the DACA people. And um, all of a sudden, um um, they go in private and they don't want to fund the wall. They don't want to do this. They want to clean DACA bill because they don't want to. They don't want to. They don't want to hook. They want to. They want the Republicans to give up the leverage on the negotiations of all this. And it's like you know. And it almost seemed like then they came out and they were like, "Well, prove that you're not a racist by by doing a clean DACA bill." And it's like literally, it's a setup. They literally went in there. Set him up. They're all cursing and saying horse shit. To try to get him to say something that maybe they could, you know, they could spin. Then they could turn around and say, this is Trump's fault. Now, since you're a racist, let DACA people stay by itself. And I tell you what, I think, um, look, if, if, if Jeb Bush was president, if George W. Bush was president, if John McCain was president, if Lindsey Graham was president, I mean, man, even Ted Cruz, nobody could stand up to this kind of kind of heat that trump can pull off on this i i agree i agree totally because the republicans always have to compromise and never give anything the democrats never do and this is like look nobody want you you said this back during the election and we i've said it too we're not deporting all these people no no we're not we're not so how about we make a deal let's close the fucking border build the fucking wall and we'll work out a deal. These people can fucking stay. Chop off this chain migration. Let's all get on and join the same team. And come in for the big win. Yes. And and you know and and, and, and that's where it's going to end. But the, the I, I liberals think, yeah. the liberals are fighting it tooth and nail. But it's the smart move. But see, when Barack Obama was president, and they had control of Congress. It was, hey, move over. You got to work with us. You got to make a deal with us. You got to, yeah. you got to compromise. This is how you govern. This and this. It's funny that you're not hearing any of that. You're not hearing like, well, you know, Trump won. You know, you got to compromise. You know, I mean, you know, I think they're going to shut the no, down. no, of, of course not, because Trump's a misogynist and a racist and in in whatever label they can put on him. Oh, you know, God. it's bullshit. Did you see the press conference with the doctor? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> I saw. So I didn't see. I saw the highlights, and it's just like I, I didn't see. I, I didn't see it live. I saw the 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 video of it. Dude, yeah. I can't believe his private doctor answered questions for like an hour and twenty minutes or something. Like, I mean, they. I mean, like they went to everything. Like, oh yeah, he's on Propecia, and um, you know, his heart is in great shape. His Blood pressure is, is is great. His little cholesterol is a little high, but he's, you know, nothing too abnormal. He's been he's had a history of this for a long time, and he's on cholesterol, <clears throat> you know, uh, yeah. meds. And it's just like they're like, are you telling me that, you know, he 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 eats McDonald's and all this and all that, and he you know whatever, and he's like, well, he his entire <laughs> life he doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, and he's got it's, good genes. Yeah, and it's just like fuck, and they're like, well. Is he fit for duty? Is he whatever? Well, we gave him a cognitive test, and I'd never heard of this thing, I don't think. And uh, he passed it like 30 out of 30, and they're all just like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, know. well, you know what? That, that, that's, another, that's another argument shot down. You know, you it's, know? it's just one of those things. Oh, but, but did you hear how they're trying to spin it? Because in, like, the official press release from the White House, the, the doctor's name was, like, misspelled. So now they're saying that it's it's a fake doctor's report because the doctor wouldn't misspell his own name. And it's like, well, the doctor didn't write the report. He, he you know, he did the examination and filled the paperwork out. And some press release dude yeah, the came White up with House it. press office issues yeah. all the documents that come out of yeah, the White yeah, House. Yeah, exactly. But yet, you know, they're like, oh, well, this, you know, this is a fake. I mean, it's like they're grasping at so many straws. And I mean, the straws are getting thinner and thinner and thinner. You know, it's crazy. 
Yeah, I don't. I uh, I hadn't heard that one, but I don't. You know, it's whatever. It's they're fucking. They're fucking out of control. Did you hear the but, CIA guy got grabbed? Retired CIA got grabbed trying to leave. Uh, trying to leave the U.S. with with a list of uh, undercover uh, 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 case officers. Well, of course, that's uh, that's going to be the basis of the next Mission Impossible movie. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the guy was leaving with the knock list or whatever the hell they call it. Yeah, I, I don't know what the, the I haven't seen the movie, but uh, this guy, he apparently he was a naturalized U.S. citizen, Chinese descent, worked for the CIA. And here's the thing. I guess he was here in the U.S. for some reason. He apparently moved to Hong Kong after he retired. But yeah, but here's the thing. There was a guy some years ago during the Obama administration, he had left the CIA and all of a sudden all these assets all around China and around the country that were working on the Chinese intelligence desk were all rolled up and disappearing. And they they connected it to this dude. And this was not a secret. And I'm like and they, they never they didn't charge him, but I wonder if this is the same guy. And it's like if I knew, if it's the same guy, and I had read in open source that this guy was suspected as being being the cat responsible, what the fuck did he come here for? I don't know. I mean, but who knows? Yeah, it's there's there's something more going on with that one. So, all right, okay. I we always end with something from the police blotters, and we're going long, and I'm tired, and I know this probably hasn't been the greatest podcast for anybody, but <laughs> I want to end with this one. Did you hear about the woman that was killed by her dogs in Goochland, Virginia? I did. Um, was she killed by the dogs, or did the dogs just eat her? There, after certain she, she died? was killed by the dogs. Okay. Um, um, let let um. Uh, God, where do you start with this? <laughs> type in, type in. Uh, uh, I mean, Goochland, Virginia. You know, would you tell people what happened? Like, well, okay, yeah. So the dog, okay, the dog okay. ate her. Okay, here, here's the the only thing that you need to know. Okay, pit bull owners are like, um, God, what's it? What's a good analogy to put them to? They're. I'm gonna get goddamn emails over this one. I can already tell. But you can't tell you can't tell people that own pit bulls anything. I know, you know. Look, or terriers, or America, whatever. You know, there's this whole big genre. No one, you can't tell these people anything. Okay, everyone's like, oh, it's not the breed, it's the owner. Okay, well, how many how many times have people been viciously mauled by? Oh, I don't know, German shepherds or golden retrievers or. I mean, yeah, okay, I say this, someone's going to Google it, and there's going to be a case where, you know, someone got mauled by a German Shepherd or a Golden Retriever. But compare, every time you hear of a story about someone being viciously mauled or killed by a dog, it's always a fucking pit bull. Or Look, ter- I say terrier because, again, the, they're, you know how they are. It's just yeah. like the goddamn gun guys. It's not an AR-15. It's a SIG MCX. Yeah, whatever. Shut yeah, up. you're right. You're Mr. right. Mr. Pendantic okay. horseshit, dude. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, my my point is, every time you hear stories about this, it's not a fucking chihuahua. No. Yeah. Well, look, I can give other examples in the animal kingdom. And I'm not against these kinds of dogs. I'm not. Um, but, you know... Everyone, like, okay, look at sharks. People know that I, I just, I hate sharks. I mean, I just, I, I just hate them. Um, I don't like anything that can kick my ass in an environment that I can hardly fucking move in. And, um, you yeah. know, bull sharks, or no, tiger sharks and bull sharks are two of the most aggressive breeds of sharks out there. Nobody disputes the fact. No one ever says, oh, it's not the tiger shark. It's the environment. Or, oh, it's not the tiger shark. It's the owner. You know, it's a fucking tiger shark. And they are aggressive as I think. I think the tiger shark has more testosterone in it per whatever, however they measure it, than any other animal on the planet. And, you know, nobody, but you start talking about dogs and everybody gets retarded. 
<laughs> yeah. You know, you can't have a real conversation about anything. And, you know, and if we're going to have a real conversation, look, I'm just I'm being real here. Again, I'm not against these dogs. I'm not against these dogs. However, don't tell me you have a bunch of people that buy this breed of dog because they're more concerned with the cool factor than they really give two shits about the dog. Yeah. Which maybe means they're buying the dog for the wrong reason. Yeah. You can't you can't say that either. Look, dude, I mean you can't you can't say that, but it's true. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, it, it, I mean it, it is yeah. true. Why don't you why don't you see why don't you see certain groups of people owning poodles? You don't. I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, like, just let me just make a point here. You know, a Portuguese water dog is a poodle. That's what Obama had. A standard poodle is a poodle, like a big ass dog. That's a sporting dog. Like, okay, remember we were we were shooting sporting. We were shooting the doves, and the guy was running his dog, and he was trying yeah. to train his dog. That's what yeah. poodles do. Like you yeah. literally, you go hunt ducks. You d- take your fucking standard poodle. They fucking they jump in the. I mean, they're, that's what they're. They're a great sporting dog. They're very smart. They're very athletic. They can do all this shit. But you know what? It's not the right fucking image. So people don't fucking buy them for that. I can't remember the last time I ever saw a sportsman with a standard poodle. Well, you know, whatever. Well, that's interesting because um, it's, it, the dog is great for that. Yeah, well, well, maybe it's image. You yeah. know. Yeah. Maybe yeah. You you never see a gangbanger uh, on a street corner, uh, or or a video with um. You know, with uh, I don't know, like a, you know, whatever. I mean, dude, back in the eighties, it was Doberman Pinschers. That was the dog, and then it was yeah. Rottweilers. That was the dog. Remember that? Remember, dude? You remember when Doberman Pinschers were like, ooh. Like, you know, ooh, yeah, Doberman yeah. Pinchers, ooh, like they won't even bark <clears throat> when they come up. Like you won't even, you hear the feet running in the grass before they grab your ass. Uh huh. And now we're, <laughs> now, you know, we have people that buy dogs. And then, you know, but then here's the thing. Then you got these guys will roll in and be like, well, it's not the dog, it's the owner. See, so you're making my point. No, I'm not making your point. There's a difference in some of these dogs. And, you know, may, it's like, you know, it's like a buying the wrong gun. For the user, you know, giving, giving like, you know, that girl that shot the instructor with a little mini pistol Uzi because, oh, it's a little itty bitty machine gun. It'll be easy to control for her and it'll be fun and it'll be her first experience and she lost control of it and killed the instructor because it's, you know, it's, you know, oh, yeah, you give this person that's not doesn't have a lot of experience with dogs. So they go out and get a goddamn pit bull because reasons and oh, surprise, there's they're they're having issues. Yeah. Yeah, you know, can't tell the truth though, because I'm I do we're I'm going to get hammered on this one. Fucking people coming in with the fucking pit bull comments. Yeah, well, fuck them. You know, like uh, I'm not <clears> even <throat> going to mention. As a matter of fact, I know a guy. I'm not. I, I'm not. You know what? I know a guy. He's a cop. Like, like very accomplished cop, and and somehow I inherited this pit bull. I remember went over his house to get something, and uh, his dog came up to me. And the dog had like some real crazy, like like crazy name, like you know, Satan, Satan, no, like, like like dickhead <laughs> or something. Like the dog, had some cra- they were like the dog came up to me, and he was like, "Whoa, Marky, now don't be petting that dog." I'm like, "All right," but I let the dog know, hey, um, you know, I squared up on the dog, you know. I'm not obsessed with the dog, but it's like the dog knew I wasn't going to be easy. But, you know, if he had to warn me, I'm a big-ass grown man. I know dogs. Well, surprise, a couple years later, hey, whatever happened to Dick Face Dog or whatever it was? Oh, he went <laughs> after one of the so-and-so kids, so we took him out to the farm and fucking he disappeared. They had to fucking kill the <laughs> dog. Uh, yeah. You know, it's because, you know, and it's like... You know, I mean, well, you know, I'm no, and, and no one's, you know, I'm so, sh- I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't even shocked. It's like, if you have to warn people, you know, it's like, you know, so apparently, but this dog that ate this woman, so this woman was disappeared, she disappeared, you know, 20 some year old woman. Yeah. And her family went looking for her, and then they find her in the woods. They call the cops. The cops show up. And observe the dogs are still there, kind of like around her body, and the dogs were eating out her rib cage, and had been involved with eating her for so long they had shit a lot of her out already. Like they had been eating her and pooping her and eating her. It was, they were like, it's the worst thing we've ever seen. Huh. 
Yeah, and it was like, wow, wow, Goochland, Virginia. Yeah, well, you know, hey. That's why, that's why I always tell people, like, you're out on the range, like, even on, like, the, our new range, I tell people, hey, man, I don't want you on that, I, I don't want you on that property without a gun. Oh, I have guns. No, 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 no. I want you to have a gun on you and loaded. Not, oh, I got guns. No, no, no. Because we're still kind of new to the area and we don't know what we're going to run into. And I'm not worried about a fucking cow or a bull. I'm worried about some strange dog. You know, there's there's a family. You know, we got we got kind of like a farm rule. You know, like we we do this growing up. You know, you know, your dog comes onto my farm and causes trouble. I ha- you know, depending on how much trouble the dog is causing, I have the complete spectrum of authority to deal with it. I said if I can shoo the dog away, whatever. But if the dog is costing me money or causing me causing me trouble, I'm putting your dog down. Well, and the other thing is out in, out in that particular area was we don't know uh, the the coyote population either because, you know, we're still checking the place out. out. And Go ahead. I have something to know, tell you on that. No, and, you know, and, 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 uh, and coyotes usually aren't a problem, but – but you know, out at uh, the Mitchell Range site, uh, the 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 owners when they walk the property, all carry sidearms. Yeah, and it's for coyotes. It's for the coyotes, yeah. And a coyote will grab your kid, grab it, grab a little kid and stuff too. But um, I forgot to tell you this. Um, I was talking to our tenant farmer, and he was telling telling me. He said that there's. Because you know how Mitchell Range, the guy was like, don't shoot my bobcat? Remember that a couple years yeah, ago? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. This guy, he said, bobcats, he said, they're they're out here. He said, they're all over the place. He he, he was talking like, oh, yeah, so-and-so over the neck, over the way. He said, they can't even raise goats anymore because the bobcats keep carrying off their, their baby goats. And then he was talking about, he said, he said, so basically we have otters that are cleaning <laughs> out the ponds. Yeah. We got bobcats, obviously the coyotes, and then he said, what the hell was it? He was talking about some kind of bird that actually goes after the baby calves that comes up from South America. He, and I, I was calling it – I'd never heard of this bird. I wanted to ask you about it. He called it like, the, a, like a black a, – a, uh, it's not like the chicken hawk or, or uh, the turkey the turkey thing. It's something I never heard of. And I wonder if you'd heard of it. He said, but they're 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 pretty big, and they come up from um, somewhere in South America. And he said they've been they've been up here the past couple of years. Really, I'm and, not and, familiar. And, oh, actually, he even said he said he said technically you're not supposed to shoot these birds, but he said he said you know he said the cowboys because you know he raises cows and he's a guy, so he he calls himself a cowboy. He says we've been dealing with these for a while. Wink, wink. And he said the word is from the DNR out there that they're going to allow a uh, a season on the bobcats because it's so out of control. Huh. The farmers are all pissed off. He said, I guess otters too. Like they introduced otters back into something, and he said what's happening is they're cleaning out all their ponds. So when yeah. we're over in the briar patch and there's the pond right there, keep an eye out to see if you see any otters in that pond. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. I just have a hard time imagining an otter would survive like the weather we've well, had lately. Well, well, what happens, and and I know this because the, the the ponds out at Mitchell Range had this issue a few years ago, and it's been resolved. But what happens is the otters uh, uh, dig into the dams, and you know, and they build, you know, they build dens, which are basically tunnels mm-hmm. into the earth. And what it is is they degrade the dams, and then the dams break away. Okay. You know. Well, you know, well, I mean, oh, we're going to have to look at that pond because I don't know that pond. I mean, in theory, that one pond that's to the right of us on in the briar patch, in theory, if that pond were to burst, it would flood <laughs> out the 360 range. The 360 range would be gone. <laughs> it would be underwater, and that's like, hmm. So we're gonna have to yeah. keep an eye out for. So I, you know, people listen to this are like, what the fuck am I listening to this on a podcast? I mean, whatever. But uh, so apparently, we have bobcats out the ass. We probably have otters. I think that's what he said. It was otters. I have no experience with otters. Um, I've never seen a bobcat in the wild. Um, and he said actually, there's probably going to be a season on bobcats. 
a limited season. He didn't say what it was going to be. He said, I don't know if it's going to be going to trap them or whether you're going to shoot them. I suspect well, I mean, you'll trap them. Probably. But you know what, though? It's, it's, it's worth uh, keeping an eye on down it the road. Is. I mean, yeah. I, don't want, I don't really want to hunt a bobcat. Uh, I like bobcats. I think they're cool. They are cool. Um, but, uh, but we'll, we'll keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, I forgot to tell you all that. So, all right. Anything else we should do before we wrap this one up? No, I think we're good. for a while. Yeah. So, all right. Well, this wraps up episode 83 of the John 1911 podcast. If you like this kind of content, uh, think about going to our blog page, john1911.com. You can go to the uh, comments section of this episode and we'll have some pictures and links and, of the things we've uh, we've talked about here, and um, special promotional consideration to our sound engineer Mitch at A and M Promotions because he didn't he didn't have to work that hard this one. There's really nothing to really believe. So <laughs> <laughs> so remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody have a good day. See you later. <laughs>